So my faithful 10 year old Makita 18 volt lithium batteries are starting to show their age, but rather than throwing them out and buying new ones, I wanted to explore the possibility of repacking the batteries with new lithium cells. Long story short, I increased the capacity from 3 amp hours to 5.2 amp hours and did it for only $16 with salvage cells. So let me show you how I went about it. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah, me neither. But if I did, I would use this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as $2. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options, you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look, look Daisy, free circuit boards. The model of battery I'll be repacking is BL1830, but this tutorial should work for other models as well. I'll be repacking the battery using these salvaged LG18650 lithium cells. These cells are rated for high drain current which is important to consider when buying new cells to repack your 18 volt batteries with. To connect the cells together I'll be using pure nickel ribbon I purchased online. Now when it comes to connecting the nickel strips to the cells you might be tempted to use a soldering iron as you probably already own one, but don't. Excessive heat from the iron can damage the cells or at worst can cause the cells to catch fire or explode. So I'll be using this. It's a K-Weld spot welder. It's a fantastic spot welder that's super easy to use. And if you want to learn more about the K-Weld then click the link in the top right corner. First I removed the four security Torx screws from the underside of the battery. Now I can remove the top cover along with the latch and spring. I can now slide out the cell pack. The white circuit board on top of the pack is a type of BMS. It does several jobs such as monitor battery temperature and some models also feature balance charging. However this isn't one of them. I remove the paper insulation covering the connections. I then disconnected the red sense wire from the BMS. I then used a small flat screwdriver to pry off the strips connecting the BMS to the cells. Be careful not to short out any connections with the screwdriver while doing this. With that done the BMS can be removed and set aside for now. I proceeded to remove all the cells until I recovered the plastic divider. Now I'm using salvage cells to further reduce the cost of repacking my batteries. So I spent some time carefully removing these cells from their plastic holder. If you're salvaging any cells in the future, here's a couple of pointers. Use a set of needle nose pliers to remove old strips by rolling the pliers like this. This is a better technique than just brute force as it reduces the risk of damaging the cells casing. If there are any small pieces left, snip them off with a set of cutters. After that I used a Dremel with a grinding stone to remove any remaining spot welds. I then checked the voltage of each cell just to make sure there aren't any bad cells. Ideally when you're using salvage cells it's a good idea to thoroughly test the cells by putting them on a load tester. However in my case I bought these cells from a trusted supplier so I wasn't too concerned about thoroughly testing each cell. With that done I can start to assemble the pack by arranging the cells in a series configuration. This battery I'm repacking is a 5S2P configuration. The connections are simple. There are 5 cells connected in series like this. This makes up one set of cells and since my battery is a 2P configuration there are two sets wired in parallel to create a 5S2P battery pack. The BMS connects to each end of the 5S pack like this. 
The BMS also has an extra sense wire connected to the middle of the pack. Most likely the sense wire is used to measure the voltage comparison between the first three cells and the last two cells. And if the voltage is out of spec for either set of cells, then the BMS will think there is a faulty cell somewhere in the pack and will communicate with your charger to display a battery broken error and prevent further charging. I measured out how long I need to cut my strips to and then set a builder's square to the correct depth so I could cut a few strips to the correct length. I used some insulation tape to tightly hold the cells together. Next I set up my spot welder and programmed it to output 50 joules. Now it was just a matter of placing two sets of welds on each connection. I cut a small piece of strip to solder the BMS sense wire to later. Now the strips on the BMS are too mangled to reuse, so I cut them off and spot welded a replacement strip on. I doubled up the strips that connect the pack to the BMS, so high current won't be an issue here. After that was done, the last thing I did was attach the sense wire. With that done, I used PET tape to insulate the connections. Now I can reinstall the pack into the enclosure. Now all that's left to do is to test my new battery pack. I grabbed my impact driver, installed the battery and it worked absolutely fine. Next I tried charging the battery. It seemed ok at first but after a couple seconds the charger displayed a faulty battery error. I thought the error was probably caused by the BMS measuring a voltage imbalance within the pack and therefore it's assuming there is a faulty cell in the pack. So I took the battery apart for a second time. I used my meter to measure the voltage of each cell and honestly the voltages were pretty close with the highest being 4.1 volts and the lowest being 3.9 volts. I thought maybe I'd have to put the battery through a discharge and charge cycle to bring the voltages closer together. However at this point the battery was fully charged so in order to cycle the pack I used my battery in my drill and dribbled out what felt like a few hundred holes to drain the battery. After I got bored of drilling holes I only managed to drain the pack down to around 19 volts. I was planning on using my lab power supply to do the first charge cycle, 
but I figured I might as well just chuck the battery in the charger and try it again. And guess what? It worked. It charged the battery without any errors this time. So likely draining the battery with my drill brought the individual cell voltages close enough that the BMS was now happy. If this error had not corrected itself, there was always the option of buying an aftermarket BMS from eBay or alike. That should solve a wide range of BMS related issues. So that about wraps it up for this video. Also want to give a special shout out to KeenLab. They sponsored me with the K-Weld kit set that I reviewed a couple videos back. So thank you very much for that guys. It's much appreciated. And if you found the video useful, please give it a like. It'll be awesome. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Also consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more content just like this. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.